But uh, something I was meant to, meant to ask you, because you started bringing it up, that one of the things you're trying to do is to kind of reach across the aisle and like kind of, yeah. you know, um, see people that are more liberally inclined. Uh, what are the things that can can help them join us, you know, join join Bitcoin? Um, and by the way, I wouldn't call myself Republican at all. Like, you know, I'm, I'm very much like kind of politically homeless. Um, but so I'm curious, what are the things you feel like you've found so far that that possibly really work? Well, so this is this has been coming for a while. The 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 real standout thing for mm. us is uh, we took it off recently. But I used to say in every show, if you want to get in touch, drop me an email. Hello at whatbitcoindid.com. I reply to everybody. And we got to a point where we're getting 40, 50 emails a day. Whoa. And it would take me an hour to two hours every morning to reply to them. And I was happy to do it. But, but well, no, I was happy to do it to begin with. When it became one to two hours, that became prohibitive in terms of time. And especially some people send you really long emails and you want to respect them and read it. So we took, we took that out. But what was happening is the response I was getting in my emails was very different to Twitter. So Twitter, you know, I have differing views than maybe some of the more uh, some of the more traditional Bitcoiners. Uh, I, I vocally say I am a firm supporter of democracy, which isn't a popular term amongst certain circles. Mm. I will say I, I'm vaccinated. I will say I, um, I think climate change is caused by humans. I'm concerned about it. To some people, I'm considered a lefty. That I'm still, I'm still considered by the right of the UK, but for some people, I'm considered a lefty. But I will share these opinions. But what will happen is. On Twitter, the response generally was kind of either neutral to neutral to fuck you. And the fuck yous are memes and, you know, people making memes of me and, uh, and putting me in outfits and saying I'm an idiot and then blocking me and accusing me of being a, a cock and all this stuff. It's quite aggressive, aggressive responses to it. But what would happen in the emails, the emails we would get in would be like, thank you for speaking up about this. Thank you for that. I really appreciated it. I share your opinions. And I was like, okay, there is there is a difference here between the listeners and Twitter. And why is that? And I think what it is, is the public uh, acknowledgement of agreeing or supporting ideas is not rewarded. It's actually attacked. Because it's not the, it's not the considered historical uh, position for some Bitcoiners. And oh, actually, also some people would specifically say to me, "I'm not going to say this on Twitter because I don't want to get attacked." Yeah, right. So that was something that really stood out for us, um, and it didn't really change too much about what we do because we would always speak to everyone. But what the one thing we have noticed recently, there's more people who are moderates left who are asking to come on the show, and that didn't happen historically. It was uh, traditional kind of Bitcoin people who are who don't give a fuck about politics or. Oh, libertarians, anarcho-capitalists, maybe on the right. We just didn't get people from the left. That's now coming in as well. Oh, that's awesome. And, and the bigger point here really is, is Bitcoin is going to spread amongst the wider world quicker than Bitcoin is going to bring down the state. That's very clear. So yeah. if, the, if that's going to happen, there's going to be an influx of people who are from the right, the left, and the middle. So what can we do as best, what's the best thing we can do with this show is represent the spectrum of voices that exist out there. Because if we if we only represent one cohort, then it might feel like a cult. It might feel like you don't belong here. Yeah. We want people to listen to the show and say, whatever your opinion is, wherever you sit politically, there, there is a show for you. Mm. And then by the way, even if you're from the right, listen to the people on the left. And if you're from the left, listen to the people from the right and make an effort to empathize with where they've come from. So... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, but absolutely. Would you say that's fair, Danny? Yeah, definitely, for sure. Yeah, and and um, what um, what it kind of makes me feel excited about is to do some more things outside of the Twitter sphere because because it really resonates what you're saying that there's a lot of people who maybe they are on Twitter and lurking or something uh, or some maybe they just listen to podcasts or something who yeah just don't feel sa understandably don't feel safe being the minority, like whatever angle you're coming from, like it's scary on Twitter to have like a minority opinion and to share it and, and then potentially be bombarded uh, with with uh, abuse, you know, that's just not cool. I think it's also, the biggest shame of this is, is that we should be embracing alternative views. Like I, 
Alex Epstein tomorrow, the interview with him, that's somebody with who I, I fundamentally disagree with. But by embracing what he says and listening to it, I've actually shifted my position on certain issues to do with climate change because I'm I recognize the things I agree with him on rather than just saying, no, it's all bullshit, I'm not going to talk right. to you. And that's allowed me to go to a more nuanced position on understanding climate change, what can be done, what shouldn't be done. And that, and because and, basically, we don't have to get into that issue itself, but there are, on the two exp uh, spectrums, you've got the climate hysterics, and then on the other spectrum, you've got the burn the coal people. And actually, the problem we're dealing here with climate change is that we need to be able to burn, we need to create energy right now, we need to burn fossil fuels. Stop stopping that um, presents a risk to society because we may have power blackouts. But also at the same time, we are seeing the effects of climate change. So by try for me coming from a climate change, somebody concerned about that, but trying to understand his position, I can walk that nuance and, and, and try and navigate that and try and understand what the bigger problem is. Now, I'm not going to come up with an answer that's going to change anyone's opinion, but what I might do is bring the guests on that help people understand this. Yeah, it reminds me of something I, I remember from, like there's a lot of shades and hues in, in the libertarian world, but there are sub, you know, sub units or whatever you call it, um, sub tribes um, of people who use it as a shield. They're like, it's like a shortcut for not having to talk to anyone for basically an excuse to be an asshole. It's like, you know, this philosophy is gonna, if everyone kind of follows it we don't we don't have to do this weird thing where we sit around the table and talk to people that we disagree with and i i feel like i see it in bitcoin too where some people think oh bitcoin is going to solve the world's problems so i can just be a dick you know it's 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 tempting and it's and it's they're like it's it's, it's they just avoid the discomfort of like talking to someone who yeah like disagrees maybe even about some really big stuff you know, it's it's hard. And so I think I, I really, uh, you know, I think it's awesome what you're doing with the show, you know, and, and like, you know, you. to your point about, yeah, the climate change thing. And uh, it seems like the gender stuff is it's they're so like mired with tribalism on both sides. It's um, I don't know. I don't know always about on both sides, but like there's definitely they're so sensitive, these issues. Um, yeah. And, and they're never normally black or white. No, no, no. Like, I, I think I've also, like, grown into a more nuanced... I've gone back and forth, like, with the climate change. I've gone to, like, both sides. Uh, there were times where I was like, oh, my God, like, you know, this this is really happening. And then times where I was like, no, I don't think the earth is warming. And then, like, I think I'm more, like, in the middle now where I do think... And and who am I? You know, I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff. But, but I, I do think the earth... The, the, you know, industrialization, the fact that we pushed a lot of um, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere has contributed and is contributing to the warming. Um, and then on the other hand, I think it's, I don't think politics can stop it. I think that no. that's a kind of hubris to think that we can just, the UN can get together and do like a global, you know, program and carbon taxes and boom, boom, boom. And like, we stop the clock at five minutes to 12. Like, no, it's just going to, play itself out it's going to be like a carbon burp where you know they have models where they're like okay what would happen if we would uh, incinerate all the carbon inside the earth's crust at the same time what would happen to the climate and there is some you know apparently some there were times when the earth was on fire pretty much for hundreds and thousands of years and so you can kind of see what it did with the you know with the temperatures and and so it seems like if you just let it play out Yes, temperatures will be higher for a long period of time, but they will be stable higher. Like they just, you know, it's like, it's not going to grow exponentially. There's a, there's a, seems to be a ceiling. And so I guess I feel like the most productive thing to do from my point of view is more like the entrepreneurial angle where it's like, okay, maybe let's just accept the earth is going to get warmer. Some places are going to get uncomfortable to live we're going to be able to have British wine again, like in the Roman times, you know, like I, actually <laughs> in Belgium, there's like, there's Belgian wine again. Is that's, there? That wasn't the case in my childhood. Like, yeah. We have good sparkling wine in the UK. Well, I mean, so, so you know, and, and we can like start to live in Greenland again. So, I mean, it cannot be that there's only negative consequences to global warming. And like for one, in terms of like talking about nuance, 
I'm very happy that we have the problem of global warming rather than like, imagine if we were like declining into a new ice age, holy hell, we have like 9 billion people that we got to keep warm. That's a lot. That seems to be a lot harder to do than, you know, we're sweating and we need to make sure everyone has enough water. Like our, our bodies are kind of created to deal with heat more than with, with cold. So anyway, I, no, just, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of similar. I mean, I don't, I don't know the answer. I certainly think we are warming the planet and I certainly mm. think that is going to have an impact in different places in the world in different ways. Sadly, the poorest nations are most likely to be the most effective. effective. Yeah, you mean like Africa, for example? Certain places in Africa, Indonesia, uh, from our research, and also you know, coastal cities and islands and such. Yep. And the people who are most economically equipped to prepare for this are the most uh, e economically advantageous nations. Um, do I wish there was a way of solving it? Yes. Do I think we can as humans? No, I think we're too greedy. I think we've gone too far. Mm. Can we slow it down perhaps? I, I mean, this this is like a really evolving position I have. Um, but I've only been able to get there by speaking to a wide range of people from Catherine Hayhoe, who's a climate scientist, to Alex Epstein tomorrow, and to try and get myself to fully understanding mm. the big picture. Right. And that's why I think it's important to talk to as many people as possible so you get as much information as you can to come to your kind of conclusions and then if you feel like you have an educated uh, point of view to make across at least you can come with that nuance and and perhaps people will trust you more because they're like well he will speak to everyone he doesn't fall right. into a cult he will apologize when he's wrong he'll admit his mistakes if you can tr create trust because of the way you operate then hopefully you can when you come to conclusions people will listen to them more yeah i agree yeah and also i mean for me this kind of research is like, it's from my, my own peace of mind. Like, you know, cause yeah. I want to feel good about the choices I make in my life. And, and, um, and so rather than like push it away and be like, oh, I'm just not going to think about that. Like, this is one of the issues where I have spent some time, like, you know, reading and thinking, and I'm really glad that there's, there's these conversations happening too.